welcome to this lecture. Today, we are going to deal with these topics little quickly but in detailed approach. My name is Gunjan Subedi and as always, I will be guiding you in this topic with practical explanation and examples when necessary. Before starting, let me kindly remind you to subscribe to My Lean University, which is my initiative to deliver free and quality professional education to your screen. Actually, tact in German refers to baton that a conductor uses in the orchestra to manage the tempo of the music. So it comes from the German language and it means a beat or a pulse in music. But as we are using a business or Six Sigma and a Lean Six Sigma scenario, Tag time in Lean Six Sigma or project management or Six Sigma scenario means the rate at which the product needs to be manufactured in order to satisfy the demand of the customers. So it is the pace of production according to the desire of the customer. Mathematically, tag time is the ratio of available time for production by number of units required. We will study the example in the next lecture using a simulated case study to understand tag time more properly but just for the understanding suppose if you have 700 minutes per day to manufacture a certain product whose customer's demand is 700 units per day what will be your tag time your tag time will be 700 divided by 700 which is one you have one minute to produce a unit or one minute to produce a unit in order to satisfy the customer's demand. So the production pace should be one minute to produce a single unit of the product. Now let us see what are the benefits of the tag time. The first benefit is you can find the exact time to produce one unit so that you can streamline the production rate and requirements. So of course, if you know how much time producing one unit takes, you can forecast production rate and requirements. So tag time will help you streamlining and forecasting the production rate and the requirements. The second benefit is you can avoid overproduction and also underproduction, which is not given over here. If you know exactly what should be the rate of your production, you will not produce at a lower speed or at a higher speed. You will start producing goods and services exactly at the rate of the demand of the customers. So that is what tag time means. You can decide a precise guideline for the delivery according to the customer's demand or expectations. Naturally, if you know the rate of the production, you can promise when you will be able to deliver the products or services also. So you can decide a precise guideline for the delivery according to the customer's demand or expectations. We already studied about the tag time and its use in the production scenario or in the manufacturing business and there is a reason why i talked about tag time before talking about the cycle time because there is a decision to make comparing cycle time and tag time which we will cover later but first of all let's understand what is cycle time cycle time is the time taken to produce one unit product from start to end that means from the start of the manufacturing process to the end of the process where we get the final product. It gives you the idea of how much time it will take to complete the demand when you are working at the current pace. Now let us understand this with the scenario here. Here it's given that a team of workers are producing 100 units in 5 hours. So the cycle time, the formula is number of productive hours that is 5 hours in this case divided by total units produced and the total units produced are 100. So the cycle time is the ratio of number of productive hours that is 5 divided by 100 which is the total units produced which gives us 0 0.05 hour. So our cycle time is 0 0.05 hour. Now as I told before we can make certain decisions with the help of cycle time when we compare that with the tag time. In this scenario, if, if your tag time is more than 0 0.05 hours, you must do something about it. But if your tag time is below 0 0.05 hour, everything looks smooth. So what does that mean? That means your cycle time must not exceed the tag time. Because if you are not able to meet the pace of customer's demand or if you are slower than what the customers really expect from you, then it will negatively impact your business or services. 
So we have to make decisions comparing cycle time with the track time. Now let us see some of the benefits of calculating cycle time. It gives you an actual idea of the production rate. So of course, cycle time is the production rate. It gives data to make changes in the production rate to satisfy the demand. So for that, we already learned that we have to compare track time with the cycle time. And if the cycle time is greater than the track time, we must do something in the manufacturing process itself so that we can reduce the cycle time. So it gives us the data to make changes in the production rate. And last, it tells you to decide the actual time of delivery. So when you ultimately know what is the rate at which you are able to produce, you can also forecast by when you will be able to deliver the product or the services to the customers. So these are the benefits of the calculating cycle time. Now let us see some of the differences between track time and cycle time because many of my students write me the messages that they get confused whenever the questions of track time and cycle time comes in the exams. So let me explain that it here. Track time is used to find out the maximum time one can spend on one unit before getting the order. And particularly this is running according to the customer's demand. Cycle time simply means how much time it is taking to complete one unit. We are not giving emphasis to the customer's demand or expectation when calculating the cycle time. We are just calculating how much time it takes to complete production of the one unit. We can use stack time as a reference to complete the delivery and time. So of course, when we know the pace of customer's expectation, we would be able to know what should be the production rate so that we can complete the delivery and time and it can also be used in order to minimize overproduction or underproduction and you can use the cycle time to match with the track time and make decisions according to the matching i've already explained that before before i end this lecture i also want to mention that there is a resource excel file which will help you to perform simple calculations it's just a simple excel template Please do not forget to download from the resource tab. Thank you so much. In this lecture, we are going to study about the lead time. So we already learned about the track time and cycle time in the earlier lectures. You can know the relationship between the cycle time and lead time from this diagram alone. We studied that the cycle time is the time of manufacture of single unit from the start of the manufacturing process to the end of the manufacture but the lead time it's given here th that it's a bit longer it starts right from the receiving of the order to where customers receive the goods or services and uh, you receive the payment so lead time also incorporates the cycle time as we can easily see from this figure alone so what is lead time lead time is the entire journey of one unit of product from the scratch to in we can also see it from the figure itself lead time is the total time taken for a unit from getting an order to receiving the payment. We can also easily understand that visually from the figure also. So what's the mathematics? The mathematics is fairly simple. Suppose you receive an order from the customer for a certain product on the 1st November. Your manufacturing started from the 4th November and by 8th November the manufacturing was completed you place the order to get to the customers on the 11th November and by the 12th November your customers received product and you received the payment. So what's the lead time? It's about 12 days as we can see from the figure here. The lead time is 12 days. Cycle time is the manufacture time of one unit product and lead time is the time for entire process from receiving the order to receiving the payment and delivering the product. So cycle time is the subset of the lead time because all the processes or the steps that are used in order to calculate the cycle time are inside the lead time itself. So it's the subset of the lead time. And this point particularly is very important in the competitive exams. You may receive statements like which is the subset of what? Is cycle time subset of lead time? Yes. Is lead time subset of cycle time no is stack time subset of lead time again no because stack time is used to find out what should be the rate of production in order to meet the customer's expectation 
it's nowhere related to the what is the actual production so this is all about the lead time and by now you have already studied about the cycle time pack time and lead time before ending this lecture let me remind you to join my lean university's premium membership and enjoy a total free access for a limited time inside my lean university's online library and get tons of free courses free books and lecture topics on project management lean and six sigma operations and supply chain productive and preventive maintenance quality maintenance data science industry and sales management agile and scrum kaizen or continuous improvement and much more totally free no strings attached as we have limited seats only the early subscribers will be given open access inside the premium membership and remember it's totally free please subscribe and share the video if you share the common belief that professional education should be accessible to all